Continuing on here with the vertical geometry, now we have our profile window defined. And you can see our existing ground is in the profile window here. We're going to go ahead and start creating the vertical geometry elements in the profile window for London Road. So we're going to come in, we're going to create some tangent lines, and we're going to put some vertical curves in between the tangents. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place the first tangent at some known PI points. And we're going to do that by utilizing the Civil AccuDraw tool to place precision input. So with Civil AccuDraw, we can place station and elevation, station and offsets, things like that are what Civil AccuDraw can be used for. So to access Civil AccuDraw, we're going to go down to the Civil AccuDraw toggle bar here, and we're going to left click to activate it. And then you'll notice over here the icons change um, because we're in the vertical context. So we're going to use the Z option here, so we're going to make sure that's toggled on. So left click that. And then from our vertical geometry tools, we're going to go up to the profile line between points. And you're going to notice you're going to have a heads up prompt now attached to your cursor. And it's going to be prompting you for a station and a Z value. The Z represents the elevation. It's also prompting us for a starting point. And our starting point, our beginning station is going to be 50 plus 0, 0 because that's the beginning of our alignment. So key in 50 plus 0, 0, press enter to lock in the value. And then for the Z, the Z value is going to be 167.4, so that's going to be our beginning elevation. We press enter to lock in the value. And notice it goes and locates that station and elevation in our profile model view. And then from this point, you can just left click to accept. And now we have our first profile element drawn into the profile model view. So now to complete the tangent line, or complete the length of the tangent line, we need to enter another PVI or another station and elevation. So in this case, we're going to use 57 plus 16. So key in 57 plus 16, press enter on your keyboard. And our elevation this time is going to be 172.31. Press enter on the keyboard. And it locks into that particular station and elevation. And you left click to accept that. And then the line is placed. At this point, we're still inside of the command. And that's because we had used the chain commands option up here. And so I'm going to stay inside of that for now. And I'm going to continue placing my tangent lines. So my next tangent line I'm going to place, we're not going to use the station and elevation. We're going to use a slope and a length. So I'm going to toggle off Civil AccuDraw. And we're just going to use the length and the slope fields and your heads up prompt here on your cursor. So for the second tangent line, I want to create a 700 foot tangent at minus 2%. So I'm going to just come over here and key in 700, press enter. Notice it locks in the length. Use my right arrow key to toggle over to the slope. Key in minus 2%. Press enter to lock in the value. Left click to accept. And I'll place my next tangent line, tangent number 3. That's going to be at 1200 feet at 1% slope. So we're going to come in here and key in 1200, press enter to lock in the value, and then our slope is going to be 1%. So we come over here, toggle to the, use your right arrow key to toggle to the slope field, key in 1%, press enter to lock in the value, left click to accept. And notice as I'm doing this that it's also tracking along in the, uh, the 2D plan view at the top showing my location along the horizontal alignment as well. And let's go and do the final tangent line now here. And this one's going to be 940 feet. Press enter to lock in the value. And then use the right arrow key to toggle to the slope field. And this one's going to be minus 0.5%. So we're going to just key in minus 0.5%. Press enter to lock in the value. And left click to accept. Now to reset and get out of the command, we will just right click. And now we have all our tangent lines created. And notice as I move through here, once again, look in the 2D in the plan view, you can see that there's a blue line tracking along the horizontal. So it's showing you where you're at horizontally as well as vertically in the two different views. So that's very useful as you're designing. Now that we have all our tangent lines created, now might be a good time to review them and make sure we enter the proper values. And 
one way we can do that is very similar to the way we did it with the horizontal geometry. So we'll go up to the element selection tool and we'll select it. So if I select a piece of the geometry here and I zoom in, you'll notice that I have the drag handles and text manipulators attached to the line. So I have my slope and my length. And again, if we need to modify the slopes or the length, we can click directly on the values and enter it in the edit fields here to change the values. And we can go through and review each tangent line that we've created to review the slopes and the lengths for each tangent line. So it works very similar, pretty much the same way it did for the horizontal elements. The drag handles are still available just like they were with the horizontal geometry so we can trim or extend the tangents if needed. So next thing we want to do is we want to define our vertical curves on our vertical alignment here or between our tangent lines. So to do that we're going to go up to the geometry tab, make sure the geometry tab is still active, come over to the vertical category and we're going to go under curves and we're going to place a curve between elements and we're going to put, use the parabola between elements tool. So we're going to click on that and we're going to place a vertical curve between these two tangents here and the first vertical curve we're going to place is going to be 300 feet. So notice the heads up prompt is going to be asking you to locate the first element, profile element. So we're going to select the first tangent line and then it's going to prompt you to select the second profile element. So we're going to select the second tangent line it's going to ask you for a vertical curve length, so we're going to key in 300 and we're going to press enter on our keyboard to lock in 300 as our value. And we're going to left click to accept that. And then once we left click to accept, it's going to ask us for our trim and extend option. We're going to leave that set to both so that it trims up the tangent lines. And we're going to left click to accept that so it creates our first vertical curve there. Now our next vertical curve we're going to create, we're going to create it using a K value rather than a length. So our next vertical curve that we're going to place between this tangent and this tangent, um, we're going to select this tangent first. We're going to select our second tangent and this time instead of using the length we're going to use the, the K, a K value to find a K value for this. So if you use the right arrow on your keyboard that'll toggle over to vertical curve parameter vertical curve parameter is basically your K value. So we're going to key in a value of 171 and press enter on the keyboard to lock in that value. And then we're going to left click to accept it. When the trim extend option appears, we're going to accept, left click and accept this to trim both elements. And now we have a nice vertical curve there defined by a K value. And lastly, what we want to do is define our last vertical curve and that's going to be a 400 foot vertical curve between these last two tangents. So I'm, once again I'm going to select this tangent and this tangent here and the length we want to use is 400 feet. So we're going to key in 400, press enter on the keyboard and you'll see the 400 foot vertical curve get locked in there. I'm going to left click to accept it, leave our trim extend option to both and left click to accept it and now the vertical curves have been created. Now if I need to modify one of these curves for some reason, I can easily do that. Once again, I can go up to the element selector tool and I'm going to change the uh, length of my first vertical curve here that I placed. First one I placed initially, it was a 300 foot vertical curve. I'm going to change that to be a, a 400 foot vertical curve. So I'm going to click on that and zoom in a little bit so I can see my text manipulator here for the length. I'm going to click on that and in the edit field I'm going to key in 400 and press enter on the keyboard to accept it and now I notice that the 400 foot vertical curve has been placed. Now that all our vertical geometry elements have been placed we need to group them together to create the vertical alignment and this is done the same way much the same way that we did it for the horizontal alignment. We're going to go over to the geometry tab we're going to go over to complex geometry and we're going to go to profile complex by elements. So what we're going to do here is basically take all these individual geometric elements we created and combine them combine them together in to form one horizontal alignment. 
So we want to make sure we set the method up here in the tool settings box to automatic. Want to make sure we set the maximum gap to 0 0.1. And then down here in the name field, you want to key in London Road. And once we do that, we're going to come over here and locate our first element. And notice the directional arrow that appears on the geometry. We want to make sure that it's going the proper direction. And this works just like it did for the horizontal geometry. If we're near the beginning or anywhere past the midpoint near the beginning, it will um, create it according to the direction that the arrow appears. So we're going to select our first element here. And notice they'll all connect together. And then we will left click to accept. And the vertical alignment will be created. Now to review this, this is similar to how we did it in the horizontal alignment tools. We're going to go up to the element selector. We'll select on it. And what we'll do is we're going to set it active to make it the new active profile. Because recall, we had the existing ground profile as the active profile before. Um, so we're going to set this as our active profile. And then we also want to review it. So let's take a look at the report. So if we also select it and go over to the context menu where we have a profile report available, we can click on that. And we can look at the profile report for the vertical alignment. So there's all our information about our vertical alignment. Once again, we have the various style sheets or report types over here available to us on the left-hand side. So if you need a different type of report, we can easily select that from our list over here on the left-hand side of the screen. So once you're done reviewing the reports, we can close the Bentley Civil Report Browser and left-click anywhere in the view to deselect the vertical alignment. Okay, let's finish up exercise number four here. The last thing I want to do is uh, I want to take a look at the 3D view to see what uh, happened in the 3D view. If you recall, we, when we created the vertical alignment, we set it active. And anytime you set the vertical alignment active, it does a couple things. First thing it does is it associates it to your horizontal alignment up here. And the next thing it does is it actually creates a 3D line string or a 3D feature in the 3D model. So to view the 3D model, I'm going to do is go up here into view one and make that active by doing a left click. I'm going to hold down my right mouse button and go to the view control and select two views, plan, and 3D. Notice the view window has changed. I'm going to go up here to fit view one and I'm going to come over here into 3D view and fit the 3D view. Now you can see we have our alignment displayed in 3D. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.